you sometimes get attached to a certain outcome of events, to a certain goal that you desire so much, and you think that you'd never be happy unless you achieve this goal. There is a positive and a negative aspect of obsession. And of course, the positive is when, when you have the drive, when, you're, when you put all your energy and effort, but you're not desperate. That's the negative aspect of obsession. The negative aspect is associating your happiness, your state of being with the outcome. And that's exactly where we need to separate the association, the feeling of happiness. Instead of throwing yourself out there at a future event where you say, I'd be happy when I achieve this. Why don't you feel happy while you're doing what you're doing? And then think about how nice it would be if you had achieved something like that. That's the better approach because it moves you away from attachment. What if you feel that you're already attached? What if you feel that you're already obsessed in a non-healthy way? How to move away from that? The way to move away from it is to completely disengage, to say, okay, even if this doesn't happen, I don't want to engage, be it with when you're selling to a client, be it when you're going out on a date or even interviewing for a job. You say, okay, I'm stopping the process now. And you're taking the risk to completely disengage. Now, there's a caveat here, and it is to give up upfront. This means before you even try, because you say, okay, now I'm going to get obsessed, so I'm not even going to try. So sometimes what people do is they show up unprepared to an event. For example, I don't want to get too obsessed about a job, so I'm not going to get prepared. I'm not going to research about the company or the position, or I am not going to prepare myself for a date or something like that, just because you think you're going to get attached upfront. That's not the way to do it, because non-preparation is also a part of the manifestation of your insecurities when it comes to achieving your goal. It has to do with your self-confidence. Now, talking about self-confidence, I have an upcoming three-day webinar, three-day series webinar called Rising Phoenix, just in time for the Chinese New Year, that is also named or coined the Rising Phoenix. Yeah, it's the Year of the Dragon, but some call it the Rising Phoenix. And I didn't know that, it was a coincidence, but still I called this uh, three-day series Rising Phoenix in Ignite Your Self-Worth. I'll put the link below, do check it out. We're going to be working on your self-worth, a part of it is self-confidence, in, in a series of workshops, three days in a row, each workshop lasts about one, one hour, one hour, 15 minutes. They're not going to be interactive. You can chat with me, but we're not going to exchange on video. So you can rewatch it afterwards as well. Another aspect that I haven't spoken about until now, because I also recently got to learn about it, is the aspect of identifying yourself with, with your goal with what you're putting out there, for example, with a service that you're offering or with a job that you're applying for or with a relationship. So you, you identify your presentation in the future, the way you are as yourself. For example, if I were to offer you, like I'm offering you the, the three day series, Ignite Your Self-Worth, Rising Phoenix, I am not offering myself, I'm not selling myself, I am selling you a package. It has its own life, it's, it's its own entity, right? So whenever you are, let's say, going for a job interview, you're not selling yourself at a job. This is a wrong perception and it's actually quite detrimental to the self-worth because you can never, you're so grand, how, how could you sell yourself? You're selling an aspect of your work, like a package right? You're selling an aspect of activity. So this is what, it, it's a change of perception of what you're actually doing when you're offering something, which was quite helpful to me and might be helpful to you. All right. Something else that I wanted to share with you, which I've shared a few times, but now I'm about to drink this. <laughs> and so I'm going to share it for the last time for now, for the time being, for this month at least. This is a drink that I've been having for a month now. It's called Magic Drink. It's all natural, bio. It has adaptogens, 
um, it ha- it boosts energy and focus. It's absolutely natural. If you're having a difficulty going in the flow or even going in alpha, I've, I've have a I have a lot of people who comment under my videos. I cannot go in alpha. Sometimes the stress is built up in your tissues, in your physical body. So it's hard to overcome. You need to relax your physical body, of course, not to uh, completely shut it down by taking sleeping pills or something like that. You can't go in alpha with sleeping pills anyhow, but you need something to relax yourself. And of course, try to avoid uh, pharmaceuticals because uh, they will stop the firing in the neuro neurons of your mind. So even if you take an aspirin, as you might know, it takes the conductivity of electrical impulses in your mind. Your brain functions with electrical impulses. So you don't want anything that dampens it, right? So if you take a drink or a tea or something that is natural, that relaxes your nervous system and and your mind, of course, because your mind is a part of your nervous system, but it does not it relaxes it, but it doesn't cut off the, the tops. I don't know if, but if, in sound waves, very often when there's an editing of sound waves, they cut the tops, they cut the bottom. So there's no, there are no peaks in the, in the voice of people when they speak. So in professionally edited podcasts, for example, they cut the tops, they cut the bottoms and they make the sound deeper. So there's no high pitches. So it's the same when you're when you are control, trying to control your nervous system with pharmaceuticals, you're cutting off the tops, but it's not natural. Instead, you can control it and dampen it from within. So make these oxidation peaks more controllable with natural contents. What else is in the Magic Mind? Oh, this is Magic Mind. I don't know if I mentioned. It's called Magic Mind. The website is magicmind.com. If you want a discount, I have the link below. They also have a a huge discount if you have a subscription. So anyhow, what does it do? It boosts energy and focus. It helps you crush procrastination. It elevates elevates your mental clarity. You're not sleepy or distracted, but you're in the flow and focused. And this is what I've experienced in the past month, as I said. Do check it out, Magic Mind. I really love that. All right. Hope to see you at my webinar. If not, work on yourself. Hope these videos are useful for you and cheers.